In this video, I want to talk about the kind of opposite process to that of a coit transformation. So remember, a coit transformation was transforming from a model which was an AR1 process to a moving average process with an infinite number of terms. Now we're going to talk about inverting a MA process. So we're going to start off with an MA of order one process, and we're going to show that that is essentially equivalent to an infinite AR process. And this process of going from a moving average process of order one to an autoregressive process of order sort of in infinite terms is that which is known as inverting the process. So let's start off by defining our moving average of order one process, xt, where xt is equal to epsilon t minus theta times epsilon t minus one. But we know that we can write that right-hand side slightly differently using the lag operator. This is just equivalent to one minus theta times the lag operator times et, because we define the lag operator to operate on a time series et, all it gives is et minus one. And similarly, if I then operate the lag operator on the left-hand side of that entire expression, that's essentially going to give me the lag operator operated on et minus one, so that's going to give me et minus two, just to refresh your memory a little bit. So when we do this, we've spoken about how we can actually use this L here as if it were just some sort of expression, so or some sort of algebraic quantity. So then what we can do is we can take xt and divide it through by one minus theta L, and that's now equal to et. Okay, so where can we go from here? Well, it hinges, just hinges on us knowing the sum of an infinite, infinite geometric series, which is just given by the first term a plus constant ratio r times a plus r squared times a, all the way up to infinity. And we know if it is the case that the modulus of r is less than one, then this infinite sum actually converges and it's equal to a divided by one minus r. And when we write that the infinite sum of geometric series is this expression here, it looks quite similar to that which we've got here on the left-hand side. Essentially, we could equate a with xt and r with theta l. And it turns out that we can actually do that, provided that the same conditions hold. And the equivalent conditions here essentially are that theta, or the modulus of theta, has to be less than one. And this is actually what is known as the condition for us to be able to invert a moving average of order one process. Okay, so when we do that, it turns out that we can write essentially this whole left-hand side as an infinite geometric series. So we can just use this expression up here on the top. So we have that this is equal to, we're gonna have the first term is gonna be xt, and then we're gonna have theta l times xt, and then we're gonna have theta squared l squared times xt, etc. cetera, ad infinitum. And then on the right-hand side, we just have that this is equal to et. And it turns out that if we are applying the lag operator to a variable, we know we've already defined that this is just gonna be xt minus one. This l squared times xt is gonna produce xt minus two, etc. So when we, we can actually take all these things over to the other side and the whole expression looks a bit easier. So then we have that xt is equal to minus theta times xt minus one minus theta squared times xt minus two minus essentially theta cubed we would have times xt minus three continuing on forever. And then finally we have this solitary error term at the end here. So you can see here that essentially what we've been left with here is an AR series with infinite lags of the variable xt. So we've converted an MA1 process into an AR process with infinitely many terms. And it's a little bit harder to see why these two things are necessarily equivalent. It's harder than it was for us to explain why an AR1 process was equivalent to the moving average process with infinitely many error terms. Um, because essentially we know from the correlogram of an MA1 process that 
the correlation of the process xt with itself is only greater than zero if essentially we're talking about either the zero lag, so that's just its variance, or we're talking about the first lag. For any future lag, so the covariance of xt with xt minus two, for example, we know that they have to be equal to zero. And when we write the process as an infinite AR process, on first glances, it appears that how can that be the case? Because we see that we've got xt on the left-hand side and we've got xt minus two on the right-hand side. But the reason for the fact that this still holds here is essentially that when you try and actually take the covariance of xt with xt minus two, then essentially that cancels with some terms which come through the sort of covariance between xt and xt minus one and xt and xt minus three. So it actually does turn out that the covariance or the correlation between xt and xt minus two is still zero, but it's not immediately obvious why that would be the case. Um, but these two things are equivalent. And that's, they're equivalent under the assumption that we can actually invert the process. So assuming that the modulus of theta is less than one, then we can equate a moving average of order one process with an AR process, which is infinite.